So for whatever reason, there seems to be a lot of confusion around the Pathfinder tool. In this video, we're going to look at each one of the little icons and I'm going to show you some real world examples of how they work and how you can work them into your day to day workflow. Welcome back designers. My name is Mike Pickett. I am a vector and logo designer with nearly two decades of experience in the industry. This channel is all about making you a better logo designer or vector designer, depending on which path you're looking at taking. There's also some graphic design information thrown in there, not just about tutorials, but it's all about the soft skills that you need to make it in this industry too. Now, if this is your first time here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you find the content useful. Give me a thumbs up on the video, it really does help me out. Also, don't forget to turn on notifications so you get reminded each time a new video comes out, which is normally Mondays and Thursdays. I have no plans of changing that schedule anytime soon, but you just never know. So as I said in the intro, in this video, we're gonna look at the Pathfinder tool. Now. I use the Pathfinder tool rarely, but every once in a while. Really all just depends on what I'm creating. Most of the time I'm going to use the Shape Builder because it's just a little bit easier for me. So I kind of understand where a lot of designers are coming from when they say the Pathfinder tool can be confusing, but I'm hoping in this video I can help alleviate some of that confusion and you'll see just how easy it is to use and you'll know kind of when you want to use it versus using the Shape Builder tool. All right, designers, let's hop into Illustrator and I'll show you how this works. All right, designers, here we are inside of Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to go ahead and actually get rid of the artboard. I'm going to hit Command Shift H. You can use this for a lot of your artwork and then afterwards you can always knock it down to whatever size artboard you want. And the nice thing about this is that it doesn't give you that little square. So if I Command minus out, there's sort of the, the full boundary that you can get inside of Adobe Illustrator. We go Command Shift H again. So there's my actual artboard. Just a nice little tip when you're working on different things and you don't want to see the artboard while you're doing your work. Let's go Command Zero. We're going to zoom back in. So to access our Pathfinder, we have a couple of different ways that we can do it. We can come down here to this little icon, which has that two overlapping squares. We can also go up to Window and then down to Pathfinder or Shift Command F9. So I'm going to click on it here and I'm actually going to drag the Pathfinder out and then narrow that back down just so we can have this out. So I'm not having to go back here all the time and click to open it. Let's draw a few shapes. I'm going to go with some circles. So I'm actually just going to start with a single circle and let's uh, go with a nice blue and we'll grab a gray border to it. So we'll put a 20 pixel path on the outside. All right, I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm actually gonna use the rotate tool. So I've hit R on my keyboard and I'm going to Alt or Option click on this anchor point. And we'll just do a 90 degree rotate. I'm gonna go copy. And I'm gonna hit Command D on my keyboard twice just to give us a few circles. So I'm gonna highlight all of them and just drag them down here. All right, so let's start with the first option that we have. Now you'll notice we got two different modes here. So we have shape modes and we have pathfinders. So these shape modes are gonna help us combine, unite, divide, and subtract different parts of our shape depending on what we wanna get rid of. So for this first one, I'm gonna highlight all four of them. And if we click on this first option for unite, you'll see that it actually takes all of them and unites them into one solid shape. Pretty simple so far. I think most people have used unite. A lot of you has probably also used minus front. So we have two different shapes here. This one, of course, being in front of this one. So if I highlight both of those and hit minus front, it's gonna get rid of that front shape. Now, if I use this and go unite, and if we were to say, grab some round corners on it, round caps, so there's a logo there somewhere. I'm not exactly sure what company it would be for, but if you were to sketch something out and needed to make a shape like that, that's one way to do it. Let's go Command Z, get back to our normal shape here. Go back. So that's minus front. Now this next one, you see the two little squares and you've got the lines and then there's that dark shape in the middle. So what that's gonna do is intersect. So with intersect, what we do, let's take this one and this one. We should end up with just this middle shape left. So let's click intersect and you see we get that. So if we take this, give it a rotate. There's a couple of blueberries with a little leaf. If we take this, just change that to green. Add a couple of highlights on it. Very simple logo. So let's back up again, Command Z. And our last one, you should be able to guess what this one does. So let's grab those same two shapes 
And we're gonna click on this last one and there you go, it divides it out. So again, let's rotate that around and we could change, say this one to a darker blue. Could be good for a contact lens company. All right, so there's our first four basics, right? So unite, then we have minus front, which of course gets rid of the front piece. We have our intersect and we have our exclude, which gets rid of the piece in the middle. So moving down to our pathfinders here. So our first one is divide. Let's highlight all four of these. And I'm gonna hit the divide button. I use this one quite a bit because it lets me get rid of shapes, right? So everything is all separate now. Now the key with this is that you're also gonna to have to hit shift command G to ungroup everything before you start working with this. So the nice thing about this is I can get rid of a few of these shapes. And we've got a few different options there. I mean, we could take this and use that for a logo. Pretty generic, I've seen it a million times before. But let's say that we get rid of that and move this back into the center. Pull this one back up. Let's bring that one in. Bring that one in. I mean, again, generic shape, but it, it's an option. I mean, it could work for something. You could also get rid of one of these, line everything up proper. Could be a tree. Could be some kind of alien wearing a gas mask if you wanted to build that out of it. Could be a chipmunk superhero. I mean, the options are endless. All right, let's get back to our main shape. So that's our divide function. Now our next one here, you can see is trim. So let's grab just these two. I'm gonna hit the trim one. You notice two things happened here. Number one, it got rid of our stroke. So this one doesn't pay attention to stroke. Anything that's on there, if it has a stroke on it, it's just gonna get rid of it. The other thing, it's actually done a minus back on this one. So if I ungroup these, and pull this one off the side, you'll see that it's actually gotten rid of that little chunk there. So that's essentially a minus back, but it also gets rid of any stroke value that you've got on your shapes. And be no different if we grabbed all four of these and did the same thing. And if we ungroup them, you'll see that it separates everything into those four different shapes and gets rid of any overlapping parts based on what's in front. So our next option is merge. Now there's a couple of different things about merge here. So let's just grab everything. I'm gonna hit merge. And if you notice, it does the same thing that we had with uh, our previous option, right? With the trim, it got rid of the stroke, but it also merged the whole shape. So that's our difference. If we go here and go to merge, you'll see, right? If we, if we unite, it unites everything and then keeps the stroke on. But if we go merge, it gets rid of the stroke. Now here's the other thing though, if I just highlight this one, I'm gonna change, change the color to pink. Something nice and bright. Let's grab all of them. And now I'm gonna hit merge. Shift command G to ungroup. And I get that shape left and the blue. So anything that's the same color is going to merge into one shape. Anything else is going to get trimmed out. All right, so we've got our next one here and you can see crop. Now I'm gonna point out one little thing on crop. You notice the white line here and then there's a dark line in the back, right? So kind of a grayed outline. Let's put this one, I'm gonna go uh, shift command, right square bracket, bring that one to the front and I'm actually gonna drop it down to about there. Okay, and then we're gonna go with this option. So I'm gonna highlight everything and I'm gonna click on that. Well, if you notice, it got rid of everything, but it used the front. So that shape that was in the front, right? It used this one as a crop. So let's just try this again. We'll back that one up. I'm gonna pull this one forward to the front. Let's put it right in the middle, okay? So we're gonna highlight all of them. I'm gonna hit crop. And you see now it's actually, it's done a couple of things again, just like what we've had before. Number one, it got rid of the stroke, just like we've seen. Number two, it cropped based on the top shape. And then number three, if we ungroup these, we've actually got a few different shapes here. So pull that one out, pull that one out, that one. And we've got another one here that we can't see. So we end up with those four different shapes. Now, if you notice though, it gets rid of the original shape that it used for the crop. So we don't end up with a circle, right? So this isn't like draw inside. This actually gets rid of the container shape. 
Okay, so let's back up here, We're back to our original. Next we have outline, pretty simple. Click on all of them, hit outline. Now it keeps the attribute of the fill in the area that it's in. So if you notice, because this was pink here, any stroke that was inside of that pink area, it keeps. So let's go over here and we're gonna pull this up to, let's say 15 stroke. And there you'll see your different shapes, right? So everything is kept inside of that pink circle. Any other stroke, when we use the outline, it's gonna convert it to an outline and keep the fill color as the stroke. So last but not least is minus back. Minus back works just like minus front. We have two different shapes. This one's in the back, the pink one's in the front. If I go minus back, it gets rid of that back shape for me. And you'll see it keeps all of our attributes except for that blue. So it gets rid of the chunk, but it keeps the fill on your front color. All right, so this is our front one. It's gonna get rid of the back one. And it's gonna keep the predominant one. So if we put this to the back and then go with our blue, and go minus back, it keeps the blue and gets rid of all the pink, but keeps that stroke. So as you can see, nothing to be scared of, nothing to be confused about. It's all pretty simple, pretty basic. It's one of those things, not quite as bad as the lens flare tool, but it, it's just one of those things we don't use very often. Therefore, we really don't understand how it all works. Now you should. Now, if you're looking for more information on the Shape Builder tool, I'm working on it. I have a full tutorial that I'm gonna do that's just gonna cover the Shape Builder tool. But if you go to this video right here that I've linked up top, I use the Shape Builder tool quite a bit in this video and you can learn how to use it through that. All right, designers, I gotta get back to work again. It's time for this one to end. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your support and I will see you in the next video. Now get out there and design something. I've had a few questions about my tattoos. One of the questions was which one hurt the most? And it's, it's that one right there, the bird, that hurt a lot. I don't think I'll get it done again. But I'm not done yet.